So in the previous video, we have seen how we can classify documents using a single activity in UiPath, where we only need to configure the labels and their description. In this one, we're going to do something more impressive, which is data extraction using the same logic. We're going to have labels of the fields that we want to extract and their definition. And then we're going to send that to Action Center to be validated by a human agent. The example of the documents that we are going to use is invoice. So we're going to use the same labels to extract information, the same information from multiple invoices that are different. So if, for example, we are working with multiple client invoices, we can still extract the same information using one single activity. So you want to stick around for this one. And if you are enjoying this type of content, drop a like and subscribe. It's much appreciated. And let's jump to my screen. Okay, so we're going to start from where we left off last time. So we have this process that I've already created. If you haven't seen the first video, just uh, look my channel up and then watch this video. Don't miss out UiPath Document Understanding and Generative AI. And you're going to know exactly how I created this, uh, this, uh, this process. So in today's video, as we said, we're only going to see invoices and how we're going to extract data from them. So in my uh, folder uh, where I have all the documents, I have all of these invoices that we are going to be extracting the same information from them. So the number of the invoice, the address, the uh, total amount, etc., etc. So these are the things that we want to extract from these invoices. For example, here, this is the number of invoice. This is the total amount. This is the due date or uh, generally the date. And this is the uh, address, for example, that we want to extract. Let's go back to UiPath. And here we're going to see what we have done. So we basically go through all the documents in the folder using this activity. Then we get the uh, I file using the activity path exists from here. Then we're going to classify the documents as we have said. Then in the switch, we uh, copy the file to the uh, correspondence folder. We're not going to do that today. We only want to extract the data. We don't need to uh, copy anything into any folder. So yeah, so let's go back to invoice, the classification of invoice. And let's delete the copy file. And now what we are going to do is we're going to use the activity extract document data. So we're going to use this activity extract document data. And we're going to put it in here. In the project, we are going to choose predefined. Then, then we are going to choose generative preview in here in the extractor. And in the input file, we're going to put the I file. And now we have to make sure uh, what are the information that we are going to be extracting. And we have to pinpoint an exact information. So for example, here, I will have sometimes a build tool. Sometimes I will have a ship tool. So I have to actually go and know exactly what I'm going to be extracting. OK, so we're going to see the number of invoice. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is the total amount. We want to extract that as well. Uh, then do the bill to uh, address. So we want to extract the bill to address. And the last thing that we want to extract is the date. So the date of the invoice. Okay, uh, so we have the four fields that we want to extract. And now let's go to uh, UiPath and start working basically on the fields. So as we have seen in the classification, we use a key and a value. It's going to be the same thing in the uh, project. Here is going to be the classification of the document itself. And but here in the extraction, it's going to be the field of the extraction. So here, for example, the first thing we said is going to be the invoice number. So let's have an invoice number in here. Let's add three other entries. Then let's have the total amount or just total. Then after that, we're going to have the bill to address. And then the date of uh, the invoice. And in the value, I don't want to do that myself. I'm just going to go to ChatGPT and get the definition. So let me go to ChatGPT and, uh, and date. Okay, so here, the invoice number, this is the definition. Let's put it inside here. Total amount, this is the definition. Let's copy it 
let's put it inside here okay the build to address and the date so i have missed d okay so let's save this so we're gonna go to properties and then here we are going to click on control k to create a new variable and let's call it extraction invoice the good thing about control k when you use it is that you don't have to deal with the variable type so you don't have to deal with the variable type because sometimes you have to look for the variable type in browse for type and it could be a hassle if you don't know the exact name or sometimes two variable types can have the same name so always use control k to control the uh, to create the variable inside of your activities that's good so now we have extracted the data we want to make sure that our data is correct and what we do is the message box so let's have a message box just to visualize the data make sure that it's correct and then after that, we're going to go and add the data to Action Center to be able to validate it uh, visually. So here, let me go to ChatGPT again and uh, nvb.net. I don't want to be writing the syntax, so ChatGPT can write it for us and it's good. So here I have this. I will just copy it. And then I will open it here and I will... I will uh, I will paste it and inside of here what I will do is I will have the extraction invoice okay it doesn't want to show me invoice dot uh, data dot and here I will have fields so for example let's have the invoice number and let's have it that to string and then let's copy this and let's change the fields once you uh, once you create uh, the extraction invoice uh, variable uh, the invoice number the dates and all of the other fields are going to be uh, inside of the data they are going to be uh, created inside of the data so you can extract them easily so here i'm going to copy it here then inside of the third string and then inside of the fourth string and i'm going to go back here to the second one and i'm going to choose the invoice number to the uh, for the total then the third one i am going to change the invoice number to the bill to address and then the last one is going to be dot date and now i will be able to visualize them okay so now we can run the process so let's click here and click on run file we are positioned on the invoice so we can see if it will be able to uh, basically extract the invoice as you can see it's not the best quality but still i hope the ocr is gonna work correctly so as you can see here okay the uh, the number is correct the total amount is correct uh, the address is correct so we have the full address the name of the company and then the address in here Cool. that's really good that's really actually really impressive because we have another address in here but it recognized the address that we want so this is actually very good from the first try sometimes you have to have to work with your prompts in order for you to get it right especially if you have two uh, similar information and this one is not even labeled so that's really good and the date is june 19 2019 is correct as well we're going to see the second one and then we're going to stop the process so let's position on the second invoice. This is a bit more complicated as an invoice. Actually, it's not going to be this one because this is document three. This is the second one. So it's uh, an AWS uh, invoice. And as you can see here, I have the full invoice number. So it's recognized it. Even the, there is a, a huge gap between them. It has been able to recognize it. And the total amount is 411. That's really good. Uh, the bill to address, uh, it's really good as well. It's Hong Kong, all of it. That's really good. And August 13, 2014, which is the address. Where can we find that? August 3, 
I, I can okay. Lord on Mount Jewel on August 3, 2014. Okay, that's really good. Okay, so th that's that's everything. I th I can see that everything is correct. So we can stop the process here and go to the second part of our process, which is basically sending everything to Action Center. So let's delete the message box and let's have another activity called let's have another activity called create validation task that's good and here we're going to have the extracted data so extraction invoice and let's just give the uh, a title for the action and it should be validation of invoice and here we're gonna have plus and current file name dot name so we can know what we are uh, validating which invoice we are validating so let's run the process again of course i suppose that you are connected your robot is connected to a cloud instance so if we go to uh, assistant your iPad assistant, it should be connected in here and uh, you should basically have all the rights necessary. So this is not a video about all the rights in order for you to be connected to a cloud instance and all of that and having the action center set up. This is a video only about the validation. So I suppose that you already have that. If you want me to make a video dedicated for that, just tell me in the comments, I can make it no problem. Okay, so the process has finished. That's really good, 44 seconds uh, for five documents. Now let's go to cloud.uipad.com. And in here, I will go to uh, Action Center. So where is it? Yeah, it's here. And this is Apps, Integration, Actions. So we're going to go to Action Center and inside of here, if I go to Inbox and I go to Unassigned, I will find that the five uh, documents has been sent to the, uh, to the Action Center. And now I can validate them and the best thing about this is that I can see uh, an instance of the document inside uh, of here so I can actually validate it just by clicking on the elements. So that's really cool and this is the best thing about the integration between Generative AI and document understanding is this user friendliness. You cannot have this user friendliness elsewhere, even though that you can use, I don't know, uh, even if you're using other tools, you're not gonna have this type of sophistication in the validation uh, process. Okay, so here we have the first invoice. So validation of invoice uh, documents one. And as you can see here, everything seems to be correct and we can see the degree of confidence now, one thing I would say about generative AI, it's always 100% confident. It's like the most confident thing that you have ever seen. And this is just uh, an image of what, for example, ChatGPT is. If you ask ChatGPT about anything, even if it's giving you the wrong answer, it will still be so sure about itself. So this is the difference between generative AI and other uh, and machine learning models. At least they have different uh, confidence level. In here, it's always 100%. So that's that's i think that's the only drawback of generative ai is the fact that it's always so confident and it shouldn't be let's see the second document if everything is correct yeah we've seen that so let's go to the third one so okay so here i don't like that as you can see here uh it took invoice as well and i don't like that i don't like the fact that it took invoice as a invoice number as well. I just want the number. I don't want invoice inside of the invoice number uh, field. So to be able to change that, I just need to assign it to myself. So I will click here and I will click to assign to self. And now I will go to pending instead of unassigned. I will go to pending. Okay, so now I will go to the, uh, the task that I've just uh, assigned to myself. And here I will click on the value here and I can basically change it so I can delete this value and only keep the number. And here I will, uh, yeah, so that's good. So you just need to do it and it saves by itself. 
we will click submit at the end here it's good uh, the value that we have here it's good as well since it's the only address in here even though that we don't have a bill to address and the date is good as well the date is good great so here we're going to click on submit continue and save and as you can see here it will go to the completed this is an old one yeah so it will go to the completed and as you can see here it's it's really good so uh, so everything looks correct and uh, this is how you can uh, basically validate the data if the model hasn't been able to correctly predict it so in this case it wasn't perfect but still it it has been able to detect the right uh, invoice number it's just that it has another thing with it that's that's not ideal so it was not 100% failure. So, so that's basically it. You can assign everything to yourself and see if it's good and then uh, validate it. And if you have enough confidence in the model and it has been able to predict a lot, of, uh, a lot of invoices correctly, you don't have to assign it to yourself. You can basically use that data and write it into a database or write it in an Excel sheet or whatever output you want to have.